The extraordinary journey of child prodigy Kim Un Young began with his remarkable abilities manifesting at an early age. Born on March 8, 1962, in a family of university teachers, Kim's parents, Kim Soo Song and Yoo Myung Hyun, held positions as physics and medical professors, respectively, at prestigious institutions in South Korea. From infancy, it was evident that Kim Un Young stood apart from his peers. He astounded his family when he started walking before he was even three months old. By the time he reached 100 days, he already had an astonishing 19 teeth, a developmental milestone rarely seen at such an early stage. His parents insisted that they didn't employ any special programs or training to accelerate his speech, memory, or intelligence. I saw him sitting in his crib, despite it being his bedtime. I caressed him, kissed him, and tucked him in under a blanket. Then, I heard strange sounds coming from the crib and realized he was trying to talk to me. Recalled Kim Un Young's mother, reflecting on his early linguistic abilities. Within a few weeks of his first words, the prodigious child began reading. By the age of two, he had already mastered four languages, Korean, Japanese, German, and English. In a remarkable display of linguistic prowess, he even memorized the Thousand Thread, a 6th century Chinese poem consisting of 1,000 distinct characters. At the tender age of three, Kim's intellectual capabilities expanded into the realm of mathematics. Concurrently, his parents published a 247-page collection of essays in English and German, showcasing his calligraphy and illustrations. The collection became a bestseller and a sought-after item. By the age of five, Un Young had delved into the complexities of differentials. He gained further recognition after an article about him was published in Look magazine, leading to an opportunity to take high school exams at Grand High School in Los Angeles. Despite not contemplating a move to America at the time, Kim's father took him to physics lectures at Hanyang University, providing a glimpse into academia and fostering his passion for learning. At the age of five, Kim Un Young was invited to showcase his talents on Fuji Television in Japan. His appearances, where he adeptly solved complex differential and integral equations, garnered him fame in Asia and eventually worldwide. However, despite his accomplishments, the young prodigy often felt lonely, yearning for companionship amidst the predominantly adult environment surrounding his performances. At the age of eight, Kim received a life-altering invitation from the University of Colorado in the United States. Recognizing his exceptional abilities, they invited him to study nuclear physics, nurturing his aspiration to work in the space industry. Media outlets worldwide propagated the notion that the young genius led a reclusive life, suggesting that his appearances on Japanese television were his only ventures outside his home. However, Kim's father refuted these claims, asserting that his son's life was warmly faceted than portrayed. From the ages of 8 to 16, Un Young dedicated himself to studying and working at NASA. His primary responsibility involved calculating the precise amount of fuel required for rocket launches into space. His classmates, older and hailing from diverse backgrounds, provided an intellectually stimulating environment. While Kim didn't feel offended by their lack of social interaction, he found himself devoid of genuine companionship. In his sparse free time, he sought solace in calligraphy, drawing, and reading. Yet, even for an adult, entertainment options were limited, let alone for an adolescent seeking growth and fulfillment. I lived like a robot, Kim reminisced years later, reflecting on his American experience. Each day followed a repetitive routine, waking up, solving equations, eating, and repeating the process the next day. The monotonous existence eventually took its toll. In 1977, at the age of 14, Kim's IQ was tested, and he was recognized as the smartest person on the planet, earning a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. His IQ score of 210 surpassed even the renowned Stephen Hawking who scored 160. 
However, the recording of such records faced numerous challenges due to inconsistencies in verification and measuring intelligence across different systems and time periods. Consequently, the Guinness Book of World Records ceased documenting IQ scores in 1989. Shortly before his 18th birthday, Kim Un-yeon made a sudden decision to leave NASA and return to his homeland, South Korea. While he didn't elaborate on his reasons at the time, he later shared that burnout, homesickness, and a lack of tangible results contributed to his choice. Upon his return, he found himself an educated young man with no formal education due to the differing systems and requirements between the United States and South Korea. To pursue a career in Korea, Kim needed to obtain certificates of training, irrespective of his fame and accomplishments. Initially planning to stay in Seoul, he encountered a media scandal after nearly failing his exams. Critics lambasted him, disregarding the fact that he had spent the previous decade in a different country, speaking a different language, and attempting to pass exams as an external student without prior study. Consequently, he relocated to Changju City in Chinbuk Province. In Chinbuk Province, Kim Un-young completed his primary, secondary, and higher education within two years. This period, according to him, proved to be the most enjoyable phase of his life. He forged friendships with his peers, excelled academically, and had ample time for sports, hiking, art, and leisure. Subsequently, Kim enrolled at Chinbuk National University, where he pursued a degree in civil engineering and earned his Ph.D. Following his graduation, he embarked on a career as a planner at the Chingbuk Development Corporation, a provincial organization dedicated to development and beautification. After several years at the Chingbuk Development Corporation, the former NASA prodigy found his true calling. In addition to his work, he began teaching at renowned South Korean universities such as Yonsei, Song Yun Wan, and KAST, though he maintained a status as a freelance lecturer. In 2014, he bid farewell to the Development Corporation and became a professor at Shinhan University in Jeonggi-do Province, assuming the role of Vice President at the North Jeonggi Development Research Center. While some may view Kim Un-young as an unfulfilled genius who failed to meet societal expectations, he firmly asserts that true intelligence lies in pursuing one's own dreams rather than striving to meet the expectations of others. At 61 years old, he speaks openly about his contentment and well-being. Though he did not become a high-ranking official or head of a large corporation, he never aspired to such positions. Since his return to South Korea, he has dedicated himself to work he loves, confident that his contributions benefit society. He continues to excel in every endeavor he undertakes, finding his own version of happiness. People place excessive importance on IQ. Society should not judge individuals based on a single standard. Everyone possesses distinct educational levels, hopes, talents, and dreams. It is vital that we respect these differences, emphasizes Professor Kim. While Professor Kim remains private about his personal life, it has been reported in the Korean press that he has two sons, Kim Sun Ho and Kim Sun Hoo. Unlike their father, they did not pursue a path in the limelight, opting for a private upbringing in their home country.